Invasive species have a severe impact on the ecology of California, and the California Invasive Plant Council is working on this issue. This is Switzer Network News. Invasive species are not, not yet at least a household name, although there are more and more sensational um, poster children, if you will, for invasive species take Burmese pythons breeding in the Everglades. You see that and you think, that can't be good. Invasive plants, a uh, little less sensational, but no, no less uh, of an impact. If you think of plants as being the primary producers at the base of the food chain, they're basically turning sunlight into living tissue that we all depend on in one way or another, their impact is huge. However, you don't typically drive down a road and see plants and think, oh, that's a problem. In fact, many of the plants that have become invasive here have been introduced through the horticultural trade originally, and they may be aesthetically quite pleasing what one typically thinks of as a California coastline with waving fronds of pampas grass and ice plant and what turns out to be European beach grass doesn't look aesthetically problematic, but when you learn about the ecology of the system and all of the other plants and animals that are being displaced by these few species, then you realize that it's a problem. And invasive species is not just an, an aesthetic or moral problem because it's uh, impacting biodiversity. These ecological systems are what we all depend on for our clean water, um, pollination of our crops, and other valuable ecological services that society depends on. And not just us today, but future generations of Californians depend on these ecological services. So it's, it's a bit of a sleeper of a problem, but that's part of our effort to make it um, increase ecological literacy in the general public and help people understand how something that may look attractive can actually be a big problem we have invasive plant populations that are going to spread. We need to, in order to be most effective, anticipate where they may spread, especially given climate change. So to do that, we need to have some fairly um, sophisticated tools to predict potential range. And then in the field, we need to have some fairly sophisticated tools to document where things are now, what sort of treatments have been undertaken, to monitor that over time and then to aggregate that type of information over a landscape so that we can look and see how things are moving, um, that's a pretty big task and that requires um, an online database we're working on um, designing so that it really facilitates land managers contributing information and getting back information that helps them design effective programs. To really effectively go after this problem, you need coordination. Invasive species don't recognize property lines. If you've got a rancher owning this property and state parks owning this property and Caltrans managing the um, right of way that goes between the two and all three of them are infested with a, a, an invasive plant, any one of them working on their property is not necessarily going to be infected because they'll just be reinfested from the neighboring properties. So it requires coordination between multiple landowners. To facilitate that coordination, uh, one of our advocacy goals over the last decade has been to support local, county-based weed management areas. And these collaborative efforts basically involve everybody in that region who is involved in land management and therefore in invasive plant management. And they decide locally on priority projects, look for funding to support those implementation of those projects, and then work on them together. And that's been very successful. That same model needs to happen at the state multi-state, regional, and federal level as well. We've been working on that as an advocacy goal and have had some success in the last year in which the California state government has created an Invasive Species Council comprising the secretaries of six agencies, and they've created a 24-member stakeholder advisory committee. And the tasks that that committee and council are working on initially are going to provide some significant infrastructure for moving forward in a coordinated strategic fashion. As we've gone back and analyzed the, the plants that are problematic now, how they initially got here, the number one pathway for introduction has been horticulture. Bringing plants in on purpose because we think that they will be you know, useful in landscaping. And that's understandable in a way because we're looking for plants that will grow well here. Well, some of them just happen to grow too well. We're working in partnership with the nursery trade and with, the, with garden clubs and other members of the horticultural community to try to identify which things are still for sale that should be addressed and phased out and how to have more sensible screening for future imports to make sure that before we introduce something we have an understanding of how well it reproduces, has it been invasive anywhere else in the world, so that we might, might be able to put the stops on something before it comes in. 
the question often comes up, well, can't we just regulate that? Why would there still be something for sale that's obviously a problem in the environment? It's not that easy. One, it's a, you know, like any industry, it's got an inertia, and to take something off the shelves is a, is a big deal, and you have to have really good science to show that it's a problem. You can't just have a suspicion. Um, and if you're going to regulate it, you have to enforce the regulations, and that takes money and, you know, often isn't as effective as one might wish. So our approach has been to work collaboratively on voluntary measures that responsible nurseries in California can take. And it's, it's not a quick solution, um, but we, we feel like there's good forward progress. We feel like um, solid relationships have been built between industry and environmentalists and universities and agencies, and that over time that will really tighten up um, that pathway for future imports. Invasives don't stop. They, they grow incrementally, so um, I think it's it's extremely important that we get a handle on them now, and it's it's on a rising curve. I feel like our awareness is growing, our ecological understanding of how they impact um, environments is growing um, tremendously, and that there are a lot of things that we can do as a society to um, to better address the problem. So to me, it's a it's a very exciting discipline to be in. And for more information about the work of Switzer Fellow Doug Johnson, please visit this website. This is Switzer Network News.